I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. This is the Jumper T16. And if you check out my review of this radio, link in the video description, naturally, you'll see that this is in serious contention to be my new daily driver. I like a lot about this radio, but I'm gonna have to try it out for a few weeks to see if I really want it to take over from the Tyrannus X9D, which has been my daily driver for a long freaking time. What I'm going to do in this video is go through the initial setup of this radio and transfer my models over from the X9D to this radio so I can start using it. And then we'll, we'll see how it holds up. Stay tuned. The first thing I'm going to do with this radio has absolutely nothing to do with the software or the models. It has to do with the sticks. The stick length is a little different than I'm used to uh, on my Tyrannus. And I think I would prefer that the sticks be a little longer. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just screw out this end part until it is about the length that I want. I'm just going to try different lengths and see what feels good. So yeah, that length, it gets, that's a little too long, I think. That feels pretty good. And then I'm gonna just, it's a double locking mechanism. So there's this bottom piece that screws up and they screw together and tighten down. And I guess I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to get these guys about the same length. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the system button and I'm gonna hit the page button to get to the calibration setting. And I'm gonna run calibration. I'm gonna click this here. We'll press enter to start. Center all the sticks and pots and sliders. Center. Centering these side sliders is a little tricky. There is a detent, but it's not a very strong detent. We'll center all the sliders and then press enter, and then we will move them to their full extents. And when you do this, this is a common mistake people make when calibrating. Do not push hard at the edge, because if you push hard, you can get it to go just a little further, but then that actually throws off the calibration. It means you don't get full extents during normal operation when you don't press that hard. So there we go. Okay, and then for the sticks, and this is important. See, I'm using very gentle pressure here on the sticks. Do not push super hard at the edges. Okay, and then I think we also need to calibrate this guy. This is originally, it is a potentiometer. And you can see down here, it's going one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, so now we've calibrated everything. Great. Calibration done. This USB mode is an important setting that I would usually tell you to change, but it's coming with the correct setting from the factory. Uh, the USB mode controls what happens when you plug in USB. Uh, it can either be set to joystick, storage, or ask. Joystick means that the transmitter will act like a game controller and you can use it to play simulator. Storage means that it will act like a USB drive and you use it to access OpenTX Companion and configure your models and stuff. By setting it to ask, each time you plug in, the radio will ask which you want it to do. And that's a, certainly a good thing. I usually set up a global function for volume control. I would put it on one of these potentiometers here. Uh, so I'll do that right now. I'm going to click the mouse wheel one time. Here is, uh, we can have this global function depend on a switch, but I just want it to be active all the time. I'm gonna accomplish that by holding down the click wheel and choosing other, and it will say on, that's what I want. And then I'll go to the function, and the function is gonna be volume, and the control is, can I, yeah, there we go. So if I just turn that potentiometer one time, it fills it in here, and then I just need to click this to activate it. And now this potentiometer is gonna be a volume knob that I can use to turn the volume up and down for the radio. She's good. Okay, so then the next thing to do is to start setting up the models. And for that, we're gonna go over to the PC. 
In order to transfer the models over, you're going to want to get the OpenTX Companion software. You can get that from the OpenTX website. The uh, latest version is 2.2.3, and you can download OpenTX Companion right here, OpenTX Companion 223 Windows Installer. I actually have OpenTX Companion installed on my computer already, but it's not 223, so let's go ahead and download and install the latest version. At this point, uh, OpenTX is warning me that there's new versions of firmware available for my radio. I'm going to say no right now. I will not download it. And it's going to ask me if I want to ignore this version. I'm also going to say no, because if you do say that, it will never tell you about this version again. And that's not exactly what I want. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on Whatever. my Tyrannus. And with the Tyrannus turned on, I'm going to plug in the USB into the back of the radio. At that point, it's going to ask me if I want to do USB joystick or USB storage, and I'm going to select USB storage, and that will cause these USB drives to pop up on my desktop in just a second. If it doesn't ask you whether you want USB storage or USB joystick, then you need to go into the radio setup and change the USB mode to ask. At this point, if I go to my computer, you can see I've got two new removable drives, Tyrannus SD and Tyrannus, and that tells me that the Tyrannus is ready to talk to OpenTX Companion. The next thing I'll do is I'll hit Read Write, Read Models and Settings from Radio, and I should get all of my models and settings right here. And actually, why is there an extra D16? I don't know. I was, must have been doing something for a video. Let's just get rid of that. And I'll do right models and settings to radio. It'll just uh, put that. Okay, great. Sorted that out. <laughs> Here are the models and settings that are on the radio. And just as like a backup, you can just hit file, save as, and you can actually save this. You can save that to your hard drive and you'll have that stored. Now that I've got this done, I'm going to disconnect the Tyrannus X9D from the, and I'm going to power it down. I'm then going to power up the T16. Welcome to and, warning. Thank you. And I'm going to plug in the USB to it. And it will also ask me whether I want joystick or mass storage. And then when I select mass storage, it will pop up these drives. I'm going to hit, what I'm going to need to do is make a new radio profile for this radio. For each radio you have, you want to have a new radio profile. And I believe the correct radio type for the Jumper T16 is the Horus X10 X10S. Because they have the same hardware internally. Okay. Yeah, looking good. Okay. So this warning that we're getting here is telling us that there are things that are different about the X9D and the X10S, and it's converting these models. So like there's different switches and stuff. And here are the things that it's needing to change about the models. Let's see. S2 is going to be changed to S2. That's correct. The S2 potentiometer Apparently it's mapped slightly different between the X9D and the T16, but it looks like for everywhere my old mix is referred to S2, we're going to uh, change that to S2. Well, that's fine. That all sounds good. So I guess that's okay. Now these models should have just been converted and be good to go for the T16. Is it really going to be that simple? Let's see. Let's... Right models and settings from radio. Just to avoid any confusion here, folks, I am clicking read models and settings from radio to read the settings from the T16. That's why I have two windows open. So I don't, what I don't want to happen is I, I want to write these models to the radio, but I don't want to overwrite the hardware settings. See, like in my Tyrannus X9D, the battery warning is at 10.7 volts because I use a three cell LiPo. But if we look over here, these, these are the models and settings that I read from the T16. And if you look at the radio settings, you can see that it's at 6.6 .6 volts. So I don't want to just write 
these models up to the T16, although I could, because it would also write the radio settings. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to drag these guys over. Can I copy and paste and delete? Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. And then close this. And now this is the jumper T16 with all the radio settings that I read from it. Well, yep, that's how I set up over on the bench. And I'm just going to do write models and settings to radio. And I'm going to cross my fingers that that works. The next thing I want to do is set up this awesome big screen. Uh, obviously, I didn't have to do that on my X9D, but you can actually customize this screen. Let me show you how. You access the menu by holding down the telemetry button here, and you can set up the screen layout. Um, for example, what kind of layout do I want? Let's go for a... channel outputs. So then if I hold down the telemetry and I can use the page button to switch between these options and this one here for user interface lets me select a theme uh, as well as this is where I will set up the top bar which has a few additional slots for things like for example uh, I want to put the see I want to put the value and I think the source for the value a long press here I should be able to get a telemetry value right yes I want uh, VFAS here yeah that's battery voltage actually let's do a4 that's gonna be my cell voltage perfect and that will put that right up here on top of the screen so I can monitor my cell voltage and since I have multiples here, I can actually add another one to monitor VFAS, which is my pack voltage. That's pretty slick. Value. Source. Telemetry. We'll do VFAS. And, oh yeah, can't do that with a Tyrannus, can you? Return, return, perfect. So I'm going to install the jumper multi-protocol module in the back of the radio. And then here in the radio, I'm going to press the model button and I'm going to scroll to the mode here. And instead of internal RF, which now doesn't exist, this radio doesn't have an internal RF. So I'm going to turn that off and in external RF, I'm going to change the mode to MULT, multi-protocol. That's what I want. Um, and that's what you're going to do for any of the models that are using the multi-protocol module. I'm then going to change the mode, the sub-mode from Fly Sky to Free Sky D16. That's good. I'm going to change the channel range, which of course I always do. How can I change the channel range? Really? Are you kidding me? Why can I not change it? Hello? Wow. I can't change it 1 to 8? To get the lower latency? That's unfortunate. Can I really not do that? Okay, well that's... we'll have to look into that. Fail safe mode. No pulses. Receiver number zero. And bind. Yep, receiver's blinking. Receiver number zero is assigned. And it should be bound. And excellent. So I see that VFAS and A4 are updating. It's amazing. I've always wanted to be able to monitor both of those at the same time, and now I can. That's very exciting. Uh, and we should be able to arm. <laughs> it's freaking working. There you go. It's ready to go. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Your jumper T16 is now ready for you to go fly it and use it as a daily driver and see how it holds up. 
There was one more thing that I wanted to put in this video, and that is how to put Betaflight Lua scripts on the radio and use them. Lua scripts are a really awesome way of adjusting your video transmitter settings, your Betaflight PIDs, lots of other things. And this big old screen on this radio is perfect for them. There's two reasons that's not in this video. Number one, there's no way on the Horus X10 and by extension the Jumper T16 to launch the Lua script with a single button press like you can on the Tyrannus X9D. So they are really cumbersome to get to. The other reason though is that the Betaflight Lua scripts at least are not working on this radio. Um, Lua scripts in general do run on this radio. Jumper has some examples of different like telemetry Lua scripts working, but the Betaflight Lua scripts don't recognize the T16 radio. And I actually made a, an attempt with my mediocre programming skills to go kind of hack the T16 into the, but I ended up running up against an error message, telemetry protocol not supported. I couldn't figure out how to fix it. And there you go. Presumably the Betaflight devs or whoever is developing the Betaflight Lua scripts could get this radio supported. But as of right now, Betaflight Lua scripts don't seem to be working on this radio, at least not for me. That's going to bring us to the end of this video. If you are excited about this radio, check out my review of the Jumper T16. I am excited about this radio. This radio has a lot of potential to to really challenge Free Sky's dominance in some sense. Still runs OpenTX decent build quality. Check out my review of this video. Also check out Leave You FPV's teardown of this video where he opens it up and shows the inside. He knows a lot more about electronics than I do. I'll put a link to those down in the video description. And yes, I will also put affiliate links to this product down in the video description. If you got some value out of this video, if you were entertained, if you learned something, one of the ways that you can support me is to use those affiliate links. You click that link before you make any purchase at the affiliated vendor. Don't, don't like this radio? Click the link anyway. Go buy a different radio. I get a small commission. It's a small amount, but it really does add up. It really helps. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.